Hello, this is Professor Teresa Pelkey. This is Session 6, Part 1, Using Multiple Selection Criteria in the WHERE Clause. This session is a continuation of the previous session where we introduced the WHERE Clause and looked at some of the basics of working with that clause. In this session, we'll cover the following additional topics about the WHERE Clause. Part 1, using multiple selection criteria in the WHERE clause. Although it is easy to use more than one factor in a WHERE clause, there are some things that you'll need to be aware of so that you'll select just the data that you need. Part 2, the like keyword patterns and wildcards. As you saw in the previous session, there are some limitations and difficulties that you might run into when using comparison operators with character data. In this part, you'll see some additional features of SQL that make it easier to perform selections on character data. Part 3, the in and between keywords. These keywords provide a simplified way to express multiple factor selection criteria. Using these keywords, you may be able to create simpler WHERE clauses that are easier to work with. To get started, we'll take a quick look at this simple SELECT statement for the country table. This SELECT does not have a WHERE clause, so it is a full table SELECT. When you don't have a WHERE clause, SQL will return every row in the table to your result set. There is an ORDER BY clause to sort the rows in descending order by population. Notice that we've selected just four columns in the table, name for country name, region, population, and life expectancy. We'll be working with this select throughout this video. And here you see that we now have a WHERE clause that is working with two factors. In this WHERE clause, we are selecting a row from the table for inclusion in the result set if the value of the region column is either North America or South America. Now that was a pretty formal way of saying this. Get all the data for North and South America. You'll typically find that requirements are stated informally rather than the pedantic explanation that I first used. The problem is, it is not always correct to simply transpose the spoken requirement directly into SQL. You'll see some examples of the type of problems you might run into later in this video. The important point to note is that as an SQL developer, you'll need to be able to apply your knowledge of how to work with SQL to the informal statements that you'll hear. You may be hearing those informal statements from users of your applications or from other people in your organization. Sometimes you'll be the one making the informal statements to yourself. So here's an example of where an informal statement might be mistranslated into SQL. The informal statement might go like this. Get all of the data in North or South America where life expectancy is less than 75. On the previous slide, you saw that you can use the OR keyword in a WHERE clause. You put a test condition on either side of the OR. Our test conditions were comparing the value of the region column. We stated that we wanted to include the row if the region value was North America or South America. So far, so good. Now we add in another condition. Select rows for North or South America if the life expectancy is less than 75. To apply that additional condition to the WHERE clause, we use the SQL AND keyword, as shown in this example. But look at the data that we are getting in the result set. We are getting countries that are in North or South America, so that part is working. But we're also getting countries where the life expectancy is greater than 75, as shown by the red arrows. This is not what we wanted. And again, if you listen to the informal statement, get all of the data in North or South America where the life expectancy is less than 75, you would not have expected to get the rows with the life expectancy that is over 75. Let's really take a look at this 
because this is an area where you really need to understand how a multiple selection criteria where clause is processed. You don't want to make this kind of mistake with live data where the mistake could end up causing quite a bit of expensive damage. When you use two or more logical operators in a where clause and the operators are not the same, then the order of precedence rules comes into effect to determine how the clauses are evaluated. If you've worked with other programming languages that use logical operators, you've run into these rules before. The same rules are used in SQL. The order of precedence rule states that when an AND and an OR operator are used in an expression, the AND clause is evaluated first. What this means is the AND condition is applied as shown at item 1 on this slide. The AND clause evaluates to true if the region is South America and the life expectancy is less than 75. What that means is that the test for life expectancy is only applied to countries in South America. After the AND clause is evaluated, the test on the other side of the OR clause at item 2 is evaluated. The clause at item 2 simply checks for the region equal to North America. So if the region is North America, or if the region is South America and the life expectancy is less than 75, the row is included in the result set. Keep in mind that for an AND clause to be true, the conditions on both sides of the AND have to be true. If one or the other conditions for the AND are not true, the value for the AND clause is false. For an OR clause, only one of the conditions on either side of the OR have to be true. That is why you see the countries for North America included in the result set with the life expectancy over 75. You see those rows on the slide at row 0, United States, row 3, Canada, row 11, Bermuda, and row 13, Saint-Pierre and Miquelon. Fortunately, it is easy to override the order of evaluation. As shown here, you simply add parentheses around the clauses that you want evaluated first. In this example, we now have parentheses surrounding the two tests for the region. Because the parentheses are enclosing an OR condition, the result of the test is true if the region is either North America or South America. Once that condition is evaluated, the result is AND with the test for the life expectancy. Again, with an AND condition, both sides of the AND have to be true. By using the parentheses, you have taken control of the order of precedence. Rather than use the default rule for evaluation, you've promoted the OR condition so that it is evaluated before the AND. The result is that you now have the correct data in the result set. You have only countries that are in North or South America where the life expectancy is less than 75. Let's change the requirements a bit. Now we'll state it informally. Get all the countries in North or South America where the life expectancy is less than 75 or where population is greater than 10 million. Using what we've learned on the previous slide, we have the country selections down. We're using the parentheses on the OR condition to override the order of precedence. To make it a bit easier to work with, we've now split the WHERE clause into a second line. We've added in the condition to test for the population over 10 million. But when we run this statement, we're back to getting the wrong data. This time we're seeing lots of countries that are not in North or South America. Let's track this one through to make sure we understand it. As shown earlier, the expression inside the parentheses is evaluated first. This is the selection based on the region. It evaluates to true if the country is in North or South America. The result of the region condition is ANDID with the test for the life expectancy shown at item 2. 
so we should be including countries in North or South America where the life expectancy is less than 75. But here comes the OR clause, testing for the population over 10 million. This throws everything off. The results set is now including data for all countries with a population over 10 million. It also includes the North or South American countries with a life expectancy less than 75. But our informal statement request was for only North or South America countries with a life expectancy less than 75 or with a population over 10 million. The culprit, so to speak, is once again the order of precedence evaluation. The result of evaluating the regions at item one is and did with the result of comparing the life expectancy at item two. This is the same set of conditions we worked with earlier, so nothing is different with items one and two. The difference is the or condition at item three. Again, with an or, if the condition on either side of the or is true, then the or is evaluated as true. Let's track this through using China as an example. On the slide, China is shown as row zero of the result set. The region for China is in Eastern Asia. That is not in the North America or South America region. So the result of the OR test at item one is false for China. That false result is then ended with the test for life expectancy at item two for China. The life expectancy is shown at 71.4, which means that the test for life expectancy less than 75 is true. But that doesn't matter because the first part of the AND test for the region is false. So the result of the AND condition for China is false. That's not the end of the story. The population test at item three now comes into play. It turns out that the population of China is well over 10 million. So the result of the test at item three is true because we now have a true value on one side of the OR, the row for China is included in the result set. So let's clean this up using the same technique that we've already used. We'll use another set of parentheses to override the order of precedence for the additional test. We've added parentheses around the life expectancy and population tests. In other words, we now have a condition that will return true if the life expectancy is less than 75, or if the population is over 10 million. How does that help? It helps because we can now combine that OR condition with the OR condition for the regions. We now have two factors on either side of the AND. In order for the AND to be true, both factors have to be true. What we've done is we've moved the population test inside of the condition that is tested with the AND. When the population test was not enclosed in parentheses, it was not evaluated as part of the AND. It's as if it was just hanging back, waiting to see how the AND would be evaluated, then stepping in at the last minute to bring in lots of other countries, even though that's not what we wanted. We now see that in the results set on this slide, the only countries that are shown are in North America or South America. We also have countries where the life expectancy is less than 75, and we have countries where the population is over 10 million. For example, the United States at row zero has a life expectancy of 77.1. It is included in the result set because its population is over 10 million. Brazil at row two could be included because it meets both the life expectancy and population tests. Countries with less than 10 million population are included because of the life expectancy value. Starting at row nine, Bolivia, you see the countries with less than 10 million. Finally, here's another way you can write a WHERE clause using symbols in place of the AND and OR keywords. Instead of AND, you can type two ampersand characters right next to each other. The ampersand is usually above the seven key on the top row of your keyboard. Instead of OR, type two bar characters next to each other. You may not see the bar characters on your keyboard, 
it is sometimes shown on the keyboard as a vertical bar that is split into an upper and lower part. It may be above the enter key on the same key as the backslash character. In some programming languages, a single ampersand and a single bar are used for and and or, and the double ampersand and double bar are used to indicate short circuit operators. A short circuit operator means that the condition returns true or false as soon as possible without necessarily evaluating all of the factors. For example, look at the WHERE condition on this slide. It is composed of an AND condition with two parenthesized OR conditions. In a short circuit evaluation, if a row in the table has a value for the region that is not North America or South America, there would be no need to evaluate the life expectancy or population for that row. Because the first part of the AND condition is false, it won't matter what the other factors are. By using short circuit evaluation, the entire process goes faster, since it evaluates as few as possible of the factors to determine if the rows should or should not be in the result set. In the next video, we'll look at some keywords that are used in the WHERE clause with character data.